Hello and welcome to this third episode of our sequel for data analysis series. Today we're going to be looking at creating a database, tables within that using SQL or Transact SQL, and we'll be looking at some select statements in the introduction to where statements to query our data. So the first thing we need to do is create a database, and we can do this by right-clicking on databases, simply entering a name, and there we go. We see the database, which we're going to use right now, called practice. And we could build a table using the GUI by right-clicking on tables, and it gives us the option here to enter column names, data types, whether we want to allow null values, um, but we're not going to do that. We're going to look at how we do this with the actual SQL query language so that we have a have a better understanding and foundation um, for database design. So the steps to creating a table here are twofold. We need to actually create the table columns um, and define the data types and whether we're allowing null values. Well, we'll add that constraint here to show you best practices. And then after that, we're actually going to look at inserting data into our table again using SQL. So we're going to name this table employees. It's just going to be mock data based on employees for the, this purpose of demonstration. And the first column you can see here that I'm typing is it's going to be called employee ID. Um, int means it's an integer, so it'll be a number value. And not null means we don't allow the absence of data or, or null values. Now, the second column, first name, pretty self-explanatory. Um, we're going to use varkar50, so and not null again. Now, if you want to understand what varkar or varchar, it's a data type that's used to store character string data, so text. Um, and we use this data type when the size of the values we want to store could vary greatly. So I'm putting that maximum 50 character limit, but apart from that, we're free for text values there. And again, with all of these, I'm just adding in not null. So we want to have data or we require data in each of these columns. And we're gonna just move through the last of these. We're gonna, in the same format, add a salary um, column that's gonna be integer. Again, a number value, not null. And after that, we'll add department, which will be varchar or, you know, more simply a text or string value. You'll also notice we add commas before each new line or column, um, but in this last, column department, we obviously don't need to. Um, so yeah, that's us. We've created the, the basis for our table, the data types, the columns, um, some constraints. Obviously, this is introductory. There's much more that you can do here, but this is enough to get us started. And when we execute this, you see that it says commands completed successfully. So we're, um, we're good to go. And we can press this button at the top just to comment out the lines while we move on to the next, the next part here. Um, what I can do is select asterisks, which means all columns or all data, uh, the star from employees, just to check that, that our columns did configure correctly. And there we go. We have employee ID, first name, last name, salary, and department. And you'll notice that I use this camel case where I capitalized the, the second word, the first letter there, um, without spaces, and that's best practice that, that we should align to. So now we're going to move on to actually inserting data into our table using SQL. So the syntax for this is fairly simple. We want to use insert into our table name, which is employees, and we need to add values. Now we're using T-SQL, Microsoft's SQL extension. This syntax might vary depending what system you're in, if you're in MySQL, PostgreSQL, but we're focusing on SQL Server um, and using SSMS to, to, to act as a sort of interface. So this is what we'll follow. So here we're actually just adding in the corresponding data as per the information above. So we're actually saying we need the employee ID, so it's gonna be 001 for our first employee. Their name, the varchar is string format, so it should be within single quotation marks. Numbers don't need to be, as you see there with the 40,000 salary, and their department again is a string. So I'm going to add the quotation marks and accounting. Now, as we're doing this, I'm gonna go through this at a bit of speed, and I'll catch up with you after it's completed. But yeah, I'm just going to copy and paste these values and tweak them slightly. And then we can look at look at some things like querying this data after we've we've got it completed.
So now that we have all our data present, we can execute this. We see there's five rows affected and essentially we're good to go. That information should be there. Again, we can use that green button at the top to just comment out these lines again. And just below that, we can type out again, select all the asterisk to star from our employees table. Um, we're within the practice data set, so it should work fine. And when we execute this, we can see we get all the relevant information. There's no errors. Looks good. So we can look at again. Before we looked at basic select statements, I'll look at a few more of these um, now. And the first one is we can actually select the top, top rows, top amount of values if we wanted to limit this. Now, of course, this is really relevant in huge data sets, but it's a key functionality that's important to know. So again, the, the number after the top, the N, is just however you want to specify. It could be top 40, top 1000, but we can select top two, three, whatever value that is, use the star, and we get the relevant information there. Now we can actually limit the amount of columns we return instead of using the asterisk or the star, we can just select the column values after the select statement. So we could say first name, last name, salary is all that's actually relevant to what we want to query from employees. We can execute that and we also get the relevant information there um, in a nice tidy format. And again, we can take what we've learned so far and build on it. So we can actually, we're going to look at where ordering and grouping statements in the next episode, but we can begin to look at this where we can actually say, select all the information from employees, and we can actually introduce a where statement to, to add another condition. So maybe we just want to see the employees where the salary is greater than 40,000. And we can do that. And again, to build on what, what I just showed you, we could actually take the relevant columns. Maybe we don't want to see the department and so on. So we can just select the first name, last name, and our members of staff with a salary over 40,000. So especially useful in certain situations when we're comparing data. Um, so we've learned sort of designing our table, inputting values using SQL, and querying our data using SQL. The next episode, we'll look at where statements and hopefully get into ordering by and grouping data as well. So as usual, if you've enjoyed this content, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe and share. Thank you.